30, I'm going to call the meeting to order. We'll start with a roll call of members. Um, Barnsley, Brian Murphy, Chris Buckley, Mike Ahern, myself, Rebecca Hansen, Bridget Powers, Bonnie Sears, Jack Scarborough, and Steve Whitman. Um, and Steve, you are an alternate, but we'll have you be a voting member yep. today. Um, and we will start with a, or continue with a review of the minutes from our work session on March 1st. Any comments or edits to the minutes? I see that. Not sure if we want to edit, Brian, your title. Yeah. Any other comments or edits to the minutes? Would anyone like to make a motion to approve these Please. minutes as amended? Make a motion to accept as amended. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Next up, um, public comments unrelated to tonight's agenda. Seeing none. Any administrative matters? Uh, Madam Chair, I didn't know whether to put the election of officers there or in new business. Oh, that is tonight, isn't it? Because the town meeting was last night. I, yeah. That's the campaign time, yeah. No, I, <laughs> I was thinking, I was like, oh, it'll be the next meeting. Um, yes, would we like to do that at maybe at the end of the meeting we can discuss yeah. that after um, so not everyone has to sit through that um, okay any other administrative matters okay we have um, two applications before us they're coming from the same applicant the first is a minor subdivision um, and just to let everyone in the audience know we'll be doing the subdivision first which um, needs to proceed the site plan review um, same applicant but different applications um, so this is it for a minor subdivision Riverside Landing LLC Mike McGinley partner 33 Sleeper Hill Road Guilford request subdivision application at 486 Tenny Mountain Highway of parcel from PID number 22 sorry number 212-046 the proposed lot will consist of 1.2 acres and the remaining portions shall become 70.75 acres. This property lies in the agricultural zone. Uh, excuse me. Brian, do I sit here or do I go there? <laughs> Just let the chair know if you're recusing yourself. Yes, I have to uh, <laughs> not be here recuse because, uh, yes, recuse myself. Get out of here, whatever, <laughs> because I am in a butter. Thank you, Bonnie. Okay. <laughs> All right, do we have a presentation from the applicant? Hi, uh, my name is Will Davis. I'm with Horizons Engineering. Um, good to see you all again. I um, also have Mike McGinley with Riverside Landing here, um, as well as um, Jennifer Daigle with Irving Oil and um, Patrick McLaughlin with MHF Engineers. Um, so we've all kind of been collaborating on this application. Um, so as you stated, we're, we're starting out with the subdivision first. Um, <coughs> so. Um, just to orient the site, um, this is an, an overview sketch here, um, 25 is here. Um, this is the, the overall parcel, um, and this is the, the you know, previous development, McDonald's, Bank of New Hampshire, um, Fairfield Inn, and then the um, liquor stores right there. The proposed lot is in the southwest corner there. Um, so that kind of orients us, and then um, going down into the lot layout that we proposed. Um, so you kind of through the, the proposal for the convenience store and gas station. Um, the intent is to create this lot to uh, construct that, that building and site. Um, the lot's proposed to be 1.2 acres. Um, we have. Let me see, I have some notes here, excuse me. Um, 
Required frontage is 100 feet. Uh, we provided 180.19 along Tenney Mountain Highway. Um, minimum lot size is 0.5 acres. We have uh, 1.2. And um, we've shown the 30-foot the front setback as well as the 15-foot side setback. Here. Um, we've also provided an access easement for this lot. Um, so there's, there's going to be a proposed um, driveway here, which will facilitate access from Tenney Mountain Highway to the lot. So an easement is also being conveyed on the parent parcel. Um, so I think that it's kind of hit the high points of the subdivision application. Um, we have to take any questions or explain further anything. So any questions from the board about this project um, before we um, decide if it is complete or not? I make a motion that we accept the application as complete. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Application is complete. Now we will move into the public hearing portion of this. Um, just a reminder again that this is for the um, the subdivision. Um, and a reminder as well that all questions for the applicant need to be directed from the board, from the audience, need to be directed through me, the chair. Um, and so at 637, I will open the public hearing and invite anyone to come up and speak um, about this project. And I'd like to speak in favor of allowing this uh, subdivision to uh, proceed and stand in support of any business and this looks like it's been uh, part of the whole process of this piece of property and its utilization and I think uh, it would be a benefit to the town. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak about this subdivision? Okay, it is 638 and I am closing the public hearing and bringing it back to the board. Any questions about the subdivision for the <coughs> applicant from the board? Questions or comments? Anyone like to make a motion to approve this subdivision application? I would make a motion to approve as accepted. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So subdivision is approved. Shuffling paper. Okay. All right, so our next um, new business is a site plan review for Riverside Landing, LLC, Mike McGinley Partner. Um, request site plan review at 486 Tenney Mountain Highway for a 4,410 square foot convenience store gas station with six gas pumps, 23 parking spaces, site lighting, sidewalks, utilities, and associated grading on a parcel derived from the previous subdivision. That's the one we just approved. Um, this property lies within the agricultural zone. Okay. Would the applicant right. like to present to the board? Here we are again. Um, and I know it's a little late in the game, but we did receive comments from the JV partners. Um, you're, you're an engineer, and so I'd like to provide you with, with um, a letter outlining our responses to that, those comments, um, as well as a revised plan yeah, set. Yeah. Addresses a few of those issues. And I believe there's a uh, Mike's response is in your packets. Thank you. That are his yeah, and we've actually his included request for more information. Okay, right, and we've included his comments in our letter as well. This thing here. Thank you. There's also a um, 
a traffic memo in this packet. Actually, I got a little more. So do I. Yeah. <laughs> I might over here then. <laughs> um, okay, so. I guess we can step through a few of these sheets here. So again, for the record, I'm Pat McLaughlin, a uh, civil engineer with MHF Design Consultants uh, representing Irving. We work on um, a number of their sites throughout New England, um, whether it's new development, redevelopment, or, um, or just site improvements to, uh, to properties that they already um, own and operate and manage. Um, so as, as Will had mentioned, is this a better angle for the cameras? Um, there's a uh, an adjacent site driveway on um, on lot 46 that would provide access to to our site development. Um, we're proposing two cuts off of that. Um, one would be full access, which would allow you to um, eventually loop over to the main development via via the um, the future cross connection. Um, one would be a a right in right out scenario closer to the uh, the exiting lanes back out to Tenney Mountain. Um, we would, in addition to the access off of the common driveway, be proposing as as Will mentioned um, a right out only driveway um, further to the west um, out onto Tenney Mountain. Um, so we're proposing a 4,400 square foot convenience store uh, building. It's a it's a new prototype that that Irving's using, and I have some renderings that I can. Um, show here shortly, um, along with a, a new fuel dispensing area um, with an overhead canopy. There would be six dispensing islands, which equates to 12 fueling positions, um, and they're double-sided islands. Um, 23 striped parking spaces um, as an industry standard that we've worked through um, over the years with, with Irving and, and some other um, oil companies. Um, the typical dimensioning for the for the site circulation and access aisles on site um, is this 40 foot dimension from the rear of the parking spaces to what we consider be the, the limiting factor, which would be the bollards in front of the, the dispenser islands. Um, through many years of, of um, designing these sites, the 40 feet is, is that number that you can um, provide proper site access and circulation. Um, furthermore, we're actually proposing um, a little bit more 50 feet in the front the thought being um, there's some larger vehicles that, that travel this stretch um, whether it's tourists in the summertime so we want to be able to accommodate um, a bit bigger um, vehicle access and, and circulation there um, we would propose a landscaping plan which includes um, typical small growth plants and and, and flowerings around the, uh, the proposed freestanding sign um, a small la um, landscape island between the end of the, the canopy and the common access driveway, which separates the site from, from tra uh, traffic traveling on the, the access driveway. Uh, buffer plantings for 
uh, the loading and, and uh, trash enclosure out back behind the, the building, which wouldn't be seen from uh, the road. Um, and Will can speak to this a little bit further. The site requires some, some structural retaining walls because um, he'll be bringing up the grade um, to build the pad. And um, yeah, so the, the convenience store itself is, uh, like I said, it's their, it's their new prototype. So I can show you some architecturals of that. We have some, some great uh, perspective renderings that, that they generate um, to help us with these, uh, these type of presentations so we can get a, a good feel for how each site looks rather than um, just saying that it's the same as the last one. Um, in addition to the dimensioning that I spoke of, I do just want to touch on um, one of the key factors that we look at when, when we do design these sites is, is the circulation of um, the fueling deliveries and so we've shown a truck turn plan that allows uh, the, the, the truck to enter the common driveway and exit um, back out via the, the exit only right out driveway and, um, and sit close to the, um, the underground storage tanks and, and offload um, out of the way the truck protects the, the dispensing equipment and uh, as well as the, the operator and uh, the site can continue to, to be functional uh, without, that, without that delivery truck being in the way. So that's something that we um, have to accommodate on, on all of these these site designs. So, so Irving's new prototype um, definitely has the, the New England feel. It's got the architectural shingles, the clapboard um, siding with, with some stone to break up the space, um, stone veneers along the front. Um, it's got a hip roof design uh, with a, a front gable. Um, focus being on the building architecture and not so much on, on the, uh, the canopy itself. The canopy uh, is a, a slim, sleek 36 inch fascia height. Um, sometimes a larger canopy can, can draw attention to the canopy rather than it, uh, the focal point being on, on the building architecture itself. Um, this, this canopy itself we would call it a, a stacked configuration where there's two dispensers back to back in a row, which makes the, the depth of the canopy greater. Um, so in that scenario, um, an architectural roof line, which um, we consider on, on some sites would, would become a little bit more visually um, overwhelming, I would say, than, than what we're proposing here, which is very minimal Irving's uh, very standard graphics and, uh, and minimal signage. Um, yeah, the landscaping is shown in perspective, a lot of low growth, some, um, some decorative trees. Uh, there's quite a bit of, of green space buffer within the right of way along Tenney Mountain. Um, so there'll be, um, you know, quite a bit of, of a green strip there in the front of the site. Um, this site lighting would be, um, all dark sky compliant LED um, lights. We have a uh, we have lighting plans generated to show light values, um, which would have been reviewed by the the review consultant. I'm sure. Um, so I guess that somewhat wrap, uh, wraps up my presentation. Um, Will can speak a little bit further about the the, uh, the utilities for this specific site and. Um, I can answer any questions specific to uh, operations, and, and Jen can help with that as well. Oh, yeah, sure. sure. Here's another perspective, too. Patrick didn't show you, but I like that one, too. It kind of shows the, other, the rest of the development there. Um, you can see how that would relate to um, the rest of what's already there. So you can go some, over some of my black and white sheets here. <laughs> Just show it. I'd like to, to um, kind of focus on the, the, the grading, grading and utility plan, which is uh, sheet 2.2. Um, this is where you know we've depicted a lot of what's happening in terms of, of 
how the site's graded, how the utilities are getting there, um, serving the new building. Um, so, can yeah, I stop you for just one second? Sure. Um, I'm wondering if the board wants to decide if this application is complete or not before we get too much into more specifics. Um, that might be a good move. Yeah. <laughs> I make a motion that we accept the application as complete. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank okay. you. Please continue. Yeah, sure. Um, okay, so um, this is, you know, just to reorient again, this is the, the liquor store here in the existing road um, where the utilities, the water sewer, and underground power and communications have all been stuffed to this end of the road here. Um, so we're coming off with the eight inch sewer main, um, an intermediate manhole here, and then a, a terminus manhole at the end. Um, the convenience store uh, service will come out, out of the back and um, we're proposing a, a, a grease trap by water separator there for potential kitchen use um, in the convenience store prior to discharge into the manhole. Um, 12 inch water main is stubbed out to here as well. We'll continue that along and providing a blow off hydrant at the end. Um, and it's served on the back of the building as well. Similarly, um, underground utilities are kind of splitting the middle between water and sewer. And then we're proposing um, a transformer um, in the back here near the trash enclosure and the hydrant kind of as a rear utility area. Um, there's an underground vault and then above ground is, is one of the green box transformers. Um, and then that serves the building from the backside as well. Um, with respect to drainage, well, so, so um, grading, um, the site is set slightly below Tenney Mountain Highway grade, so the driveways will kind of come down a little bit as you come in and then it'll basically be very flat. You know, we basically provided um, um, one to two percent cross slopes, so it's very similar to what's what's out there now, just um, enough to maintain drainage away from the, the buildings into the, the catch basins. Um, as Patrick mentioned, we are bringing the site up a little bit um, and kind of in keeping with what's been happening with the rest of the site and um, in accordance with the previously permitted development plan um, for the floodplain compensation and fill. Um, we're, we're showing the fill here where it comes up. This area has already been filled a little bit. I mean, filled for the most part. I think it's maybe maybe three or four feet shy of where it's going to be. Um, and in the back here, in order to maintain some separation from the wetlands in the back, um, we're providing a, a, a modular wall. Um, this one is a pretty, pretty high wall. I think the, the tallest point is about 12 feet in the back here. Um, Along this side, we also have a wall that's, that's about six feet at its highest point. Um, otherwise, we're using vegetative slope to um, you know, uh, tie in the grade to existing. Drainage um, is being collected kind of in two different systems. So um, we're, we're, we have a collection system that serves this lot um, by itself. So um, there's different requirements because of the, the fuel dispensing for how we're able to um, detain and treat that stormwater. So um, that's all being collected via a catch basin and pipe system. It's conveyed around to this, this point here, um, at which point there's a pretreatment tank, uh, an oil water sediment separator, um, which all of this site is going to first before going into an underground um, detention system. And this is a, um, a little bit different than what we proposed on previous sites. Um, we're not permitted to infiltrate water from uh, that's coming off of this portion of the site because of the fuel dispensing. So we're proposing a um, watertight HDPE with 60 inch pipes underground to detain that storm water. Um, and then it's metered out slowly to a, um, it's called a storm filter. It's a, it's a rectangular tank. It's got um, treatment filter cartridges that the water circulates through um, and meets all the state requirements for, for treatment prior to then discharging 
up at the north end here. Um, we provide a, a stone outlet apron that'll discharge here and then um, flow overland to the wetlands. So the other portion of the site is, is basically what remains on the parent parcel, uh, which includes this main driveway primarily and then this utility connection road. Um, this is being collected, it's, it's a crown driveway, so in the middle it kind of splits and flows each, each direction. Um, we have a catch basin here and a catch basin here that's collecting half of it. And then that <coughs> is flowing over through culverts and grass swales um, to a sediment forebay. Um, these swales are also gonna pick up the other half of the driveway and convey basically all of this this paved area to a four bay for pretreatment, and then we're coming down into an infiltration area. So we're trying to provide some groundwater recharge and infiltration for the portion of the site that we can. Um, the intent with the phased um, development is, is, you know, once this site is fully developed, this entire area will be filled, um, as well as a portion of this area back here. And so the next step, we've kind of set this up so that we can install a catch basin here and a catch basin here where those pipes are now and then collect that and um, send it to a future underground infiltration area. So the, the intent is to continue infiltrating that water in a new, a new you know, a chamber galley that's, that's constructed as part of the future development, um, which is very similar to what's been done on the other sites. Um, <coughs> so, We also have um, just just kind of recapping on this on this access road. So we're calling it kind of a utility access drive um, at this point. The, the the reason that we've done this is to facilitate the construction of the utilities. Um, and as I said, in the future development, this is all going to be filled into this same grade essentially. So we needed to have enough material to provide frost protection for the for the sewer and water. And this also allows for a maintenance connection um, that can be, can be used as needed. But um, we, are, we, we have an existing gate on this end, and we proposed um, a matching gate on the other end just for um, you know, security and just so that the general public doesn't necessarily um, take their vehicle over there. Um, let's see, I think. That's kind of covered that. We've done, um, we also have, we do have site lighting um, along this side of the um, driveway and in the center median that's gonna light the driveway. Um, and as Patrick mentioned, there's, there's site lighting provided for the site as well. Um, so we provided illumination for, for both of those. Um, <coughs> A few things that I wanted to um, kind of touch on that was brought, were brought up at the previous hearing. Um, there was there was some mention, uh, some concern of the uh, wood turtles being in the area, and we know that they have been um, on the site in the past. Um, as part of the alteration of terrain application, we submitted a data check to um, Natural Heritage, Heritage Bureau, and they look at it, you know, threatened and endangered species. Um, it came back with um, that there may be species in the area, but the project, as proposed, doesn't appear to um, impact. Um, however, we've still we've included a note on our plan that was similar to what we did in past phases of the project um, on sheet C1, which is the existing condition sheet. In the general con in the general notes, um, we provided some guidance to the contractor. Um, if they encounter the wood turtle, they're to call um, a couple of th uh, two contact people at Fish and Game, um, and that's what um, we were um, directed to do in, in past projects. Um, so, uh, and I know you know Andrew's construction is intended to do some of the, a lot of this site work, so I know that they're fully aware of that issue. Um, traffic was brought up. Um, we are um, 
you know, coordinating with DOT on the driveway application and they'll be thoroughly reviewing everything. We've also included the traffic mitigation memo from Steve Perna um, in the packet you just received. And um, Steve's recommendation is um, to basically go with, with um, the layout that we have here. Um, it'll provide an additional um, kind of a right turn lane here. So there's, a little, there's widening along this section to provide a right turn lane so when people are turning in, you know, people can pass by them. Um, and then essentially operate these, both of these driveways um, in a stop sign condition. Um, so there'll be a stop sign here with stop bar and similar here um, with some do not enter signs. And the intent is that the center, the center lane will remain a dual, a dual use um, turning lane as it is now. Um, another issue that was brought up uh, was the, was this, you know, the construction of this this access road and the fact that it's in the, the floodplain, um, and um, Steve brought that up as a, as, a, as a potential issue, you know, because this area does flood during start large storm events. So we have provided two 18-inch culverts, which are sized to to um, basically provide an equalization um, there, and um, so that we don't end up with, um, you know, so that everything kind of fills up as as it does now. Um, so, and that's been, that's been, um, reviewed with, with alteration of terrain and, and they're reviewing it now, but we've discussed that with them and they, they, um, agree with that approach. Um, we have a copy of their, uh, permit request, if anybody wants to view it. Um, <clears throat> and then in terms of, um, pedestrian and vehicular connectivity, I know that has, has come up. And um, so if we come back to one of the overview sheets here. Uh, maybe this one's going to to show the whole thing. Um, so while we don't, you know, have a full crystal ball and know exactly what's going to happen in this area, um, we do know that you know we have we have sidewalks along this side of the road, um, and the intent with the future development is to connect this sidewalk to this to this part of the site and to the rain, remaining part of the site. Um, so we would carry it through. If this if this ends up being a big box here, a big box store, then there would likely be um, crosswalk and then sidewalk in front of the, the building and then crosswalk to get back. Um, so that people can, can basically walk, you know, from Bank of New Hampshire, they can walk all the way over to, to Irving and get to anything that's in between. Um, at this point, you know, I think we're, we're feeling like it's, it's the very kind of independent sites at this point. This one's kind of very far from the rest of the site. Um, and so we're not really in a position to provide that now, but that's certainly the intent moving forward. Um, and in terms of vehicular, certainly, you know, the intent is to have to have two main access drives and with connectivity between all of them um, in the in the future development, which hopefully isn't too far off, but we're not quite there yet. Um, one other thing I just would note is, as you as you are all aware, we we do have um, a number of other permitting processes that we're working through concurrently, um, DOT driveway permitting. Um, alteration of terrain for the drainage. Um, we have permitting through DES on the underground storage tanks for the fuel. And um, we are also have submitted to the Plymouth Village Water and Sewer District for the water and sewer main extensions as well as the services um, for the building. So um, I've also provided the, uh, you know, our response letter um, to Mike Vignali's comments. Um, I don't know if it's it's pertinent to step through that at this point. I can if you'd like, but um, I guess we would we we don't have any issue with addressing all the the comments and concerns that he's had. We've coordinated on a few things with him already to this point, and I think that we are you know we're in a good position to provide certainly a, a revised plan set that will 
um, address all of his, his issues. So I think I can, oh, one other thing Brian had brought up is, is lot coverage. And we, um, we did do a calculation on that. Um, it's, we, we have 61.5% on the proposed lot. 75% um, is allowed. So in good shape there. Um, so at this point, I guess I would open it up to um, questions. If you <laughs> I do have a question. Sure. And that would be, um, you mentioned that the the actual level of the site is going to be two to three feet below grade of Route 25. I think it's, I, I might have misspoke. I'm not sure it's two to three feet. It might okay. be one to two feet. It's, okay. it's a little bit below. It will be below. And, and I, I just in observation have seen uh, during flood stages water up to 25 and over and I wondered what you know if you're below that level uh, what's it going to do to that site right and that and that's a good question um, so um, the site is being proposed at the same the buildings basically the same elevation as the other buildings that are out there now okay. um, and we've been working um, under this this flood compensation permitting which is in a sim simplified version it's basically a one-to-one -one. so we're, we're mm -hmm. digging over here and we're placing it over in the fill pad mm -hmm. so that we're the intent is to provide compensation to mitigate for the impact so that the floodplain is the, the flood elevation um, won't be altered in that area okay. so as we continue to progress the development um, you know the the floodplain will basically stay closer to the Baker River okay yeah. good luck so unless the board has any other pressing questions I'd like to open it up to public hearing at this time. I have a bunch but I can wait till after is that okay with you yeah yeah okay all right yeah. So it is 607 and I would 707 <laughs> Oh, look at that. Ah. <laughs> Just brought us back in time. Uh, <laughs> it, thank you. It is now 707 and a half. Um, I would like to open up the public hearing. So is there anyone that would like to come up and speak in favor of this project? Frank Miller again. And I definitely speak in support and in favor of this project. It looks like it's a well thought out uh, project and I believe it would do us very well, it fit in. It looks like it meets all of the technical criteria that we look for in a site plan review. And I believe it uh, would be uh, something that we could use in the town of Plymouth. Thank you. Yeah, you know, like this. Please Absolutely. step up to the microphone, Bonnie. Yes. I'm Bonnie Sears. I live on 26, uh, 27 Steel Drive, and I am an abutter. And I, I don't see anything wrong with this at all. I think it, it's a good, thought out project. And uh, it certainly is going to be a better place for it than down where they get flooded out all the time. So, yeah, I'm all for this. Hi, Russ Harris, Harris Family Furniture. Uh, just a quick question before I give my approval. Um, is there a stoplight? There, is there going to be any sort of stoplight on the highway there? Not as part of this, this project. Okay, I noticed so, in one of the pages it looked like there was a, a stoplight kind of right at the entrance there, okay. or maybe I maybe I'm I misspoke about it. That kind of looked I do like. I see it, it on that sheet. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> is that, that is the plan for for future development? Is, you know, once we get the, the trip generation on this um, on this development doesn't warrant a okay. signal at this time. Okay. Um, 
but that is the intent for, for the okay item. well I'd like to voice I think it looks good and I'd like to voice my approval I would like to if a uh, stoplight is going in in the future I think we might want to look at where that's located that would be my thing with that. thank you Re Rebecca Russ yeah could you show us where your driveway is approximately yeah. um, we would be yeah where would it be um, yeah, it's just two on the bottom on that one so we would be uh, where's the where's your new mentions <laughs> Let me pull up a different plan. Oh, yeah. I, think that the, uh, I saw it on one of the other. Yeah. I believe we are basically right here. Mm. Um, they don't line up. So they don't line up. So I saw it looked like a proposed stoplight was to go here. And this would be our entrance. I believe that would be Kirk's entrance. So um, maybe something could be worked out where you know it was more uniform, but you no know, cross versus right there. But where's the property line for your property in Kirk's? Um, that's good. I believe ours, uh, and I'm not sure Mike might be able to answer this better, but I believe our property line is like right here. And then Kirk's is here, and then there's a kind of a, a dead space in the middle. <clears throat> That's it. Thank you. Well, I think this. Yeah, we're going to have to fix property line there. So this was the driveway you were seeing on the other plan. This is the other driveway. I think this is a property line. This is a property line. Any other comments or public comments for or against or of a general nature? Wow. All right. Um, so let's bring it back to the board. And I know Steve has some questions, and I'm sure. Some other folks do as well. Do we want to go by topic or by section? Otherwise, we're going to be jumping all over. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> Would you like to determine the topics? Not necessarily, but I think <laughs> Russ just raised a good one, which yeah. wasn't really on my radar. But okay. if we're going to be talking about making a formal entrance that eventually is going to get a light, like how do we best coordinate with the other property owners now? So, so I appreciate him raising that. We'll close the public hearing <laughs> at 7:12. Um, so, should we start talking about uh, driveway transportation, Tenney Mountain sure. interface first? Sure, that would be great. Okay. All right. So, I just kind of raised that. I don't know how those others on the board feel about that. Um, you know, I appreciated Will's comment about the connections within the site for pedestrians. I also have connection, I have consideration or concern for connections off the site for pedestrians. If somebody's cutting across the street from Harris Family Furniture or coming from the cell phone place, like, did they just walk in the lane? Um, but this this light issue may be even a bigger, bigger issue. That if we could just figure out how it's gonna go forward so that we don't run into a problem when you come in with another applicant and wanna have to go for a light with DOT. Steve, this is anticipating traffic coming out of the development once it's finished, this stoplight, so. I am guessing, yeah. yeah. Is the public hearing closed, or can I provide Oh, comments? please, please. Okay. Um, so, just to kind of explain what the, the future intent is for this, well, this, this sheet again doesn't really <laughs> Sorry. It's not helping you out. Um, yeah. This one's pretty good. I'll go with this one. Okay, so well, this one doesn't show the proposed one, but <laughs> um, no, we can see the proposed one. There it is. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, so um, as was discussed here, this is the Harris Furniture entrance now. Um, this is an entrance to uh, Curb's Auto. Um, there is a property frontage here that's about 200 feet wide between the two properties. Um, it serves a, a large parcel on the other side. Right, right. That, um, Mike has recently acquired. Um, so the intent is to have a, a four-way intersection that would um, that lines up, you know, with this driveway and another driveway on the other side that would be signalized. Um, this has been coordinated with DOT um, conceptually over over the years. Um, they're aware of that intent, and they were um, actually pushing like to get this um, in a position where it could would be coordinated with that. Um, so, you know, I think the intent in the future would be, well, I don't want to speak too much to it, but, you know, I think <coughs> if, if, if a main driveway here comes in, then it would be the, the potential will be there to connect these sites off of that main driveway in a different manner so that they were accessed via the light uh, in lieu of Tenny Mountain Highway potentially. But that's something that's going to have to be coordinated and discussed with, with the landowners and, and DOT and everything. But, I guess I wanted to kind of shed some light on, on how the driveway ended up where, where it did. I think part of my concern, that was very helpful. So I think part of my concern is just knowing that DOT has such specific standards about proximity of driveways to lights and the fact that you've thought about it, how you can coordinate that, and whether or not Harris Family Furniture would be forced to terminate their curb cut and connect, even if it was just a stub to the light. Like just, there's a lot of questions around that. I just wanted to make sure that the board was aware and we don't create problems for this applicant or other applicants in the future. Well, I think that's a recurring thing that's happened with this with this development is just making sure we're not making trouble or down the road for the town for the development for the board. So if I may, yes. uh, I can assure the board that uh, my purpose here was to uh, be as accommodating to Harris Furniture as, as possible. We have met already. I think it's safe to say they can speak. Um, I, I don't envision any problem at all in, in making that intersection the way it should be and uh, adhering to what the state has uh, requested of, of Will and I. Um, the phasing of projects is always difficult, mm -hmm. but um, I do recall Ten years ago, when, when uh, Home Depot was here, and there was a site plan that was presented, and I don't want to speak out of turn to my friends, but I think that plan meld joined well with Harris Furniture, and if they were in agreement with that, it is very possible that um, what what we would do, which kind of mirrors what was done at that particular time, would probably end up to be the same way. But you know, I'm not an obstructionist, and I will do my best to go ahead and make the best project possible and take care of uh, my good friends. That We've had meetings before, and I think they know um, what the intent is here and my commitment in uh, gathering the piece of property across the street to make sure that there was not anybody that would pose a problem in the future. So I, I think we're going to be fine. I really do. Like, So yeah, that brings back a lot of memories. I, I'm yeah. the <laughs> one person on that board that remembers that from 10 years ago. And the long meetings till 1 o'clock or however late those meetings went. So um, I'm guessing by the absence of George Kirk that you've had discussion at this meeting tonight that you've probably had discussions with him as well as, as Russ and the Harris family? Yes. Is there anything that you want to? No. Okay. Not, not at this, not at this, <laughs> at this, not at this point. Um, Mr. Burrow, I, Mr. Burrow and I have been talking for 12 years and it took us a long time to put everything together. And it does in, in these projects in these times. Things do not happen quick. The regulations are overbearing um, and challenging and enlightening. But, uh, I would like to think that uh, maybe Mr. Kirk's property and this would all 
clean up everything and make for a very nice, uh, safe intersection as Plymouth grows. But that remains to be seen with, uh, with Mr. Kirk, but we've had discussions recently. If the signal went in at that road, um, the Kirk property driveway to the east would be over 75 feet from the intersection, just from rough scaling off the plan. Mm -hmm. So it would it would fit with the DOT's yeah. 75 foot setback. And so the DOT would be okay with the eventuality of having two lights that close together? You mean uh, with Highland Street? Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Correct. Right. And then how far away is um, um, Smith Bridge? Smith Bridge from there. That was a consideration during our meeting with DOT as well, and they reviewed that. And based on, it's going to kind of depend on what goes on this site, but the traffic generation. Posed by a big box store would would generate enough traffic to warrant a signal at this location and keeping the other two in place, according to the DOT met with in Concord. Keeping the other two in place because Smith Ridge doesn't have. Sorry, Smith. Yes, it doesn't have an intersection. I mean, it doesn't have a light. So so yes, just those two basically. But it is, I don't know how far it is from Smith, but that was something they brought up in the discussion, I think. It was reviewed in terms of the proximity. Yeah, go ahead. I, I just wanted to say, I, Mike has been been talking with us. Um, and I, back when we were um, working with the Home Depot, when Lowe's and Home Depot were going, um, we had talked about incorporating uh, entrance from if, if they were to put a stoplight there but um, one of the main things is we just don't want to lose our access to Teddy Mountain Highway mm. from that from that spot so and and with the Home Depot I believe that um, we weren't going to we were still going to have our access plus plus an extra access and that's that's the only thing that but I, I'm happy, we're happy to work with Mike. And, um, this looks like a great, um, a, another great thing for Tenny Mountain Highways. Any other questions, comments about Tenny Mountain interface intersections? One more thing. Yeah. Um, the town keeps throwing out the idea every couple few years about some sort of access road that would, um, be on the opposite side and there was a question about that property that you just acquired which it's all coming together now um, that it, it may cross there at some point down the road or discussions could be in, just keep that in the back of your mind mr. French has reminded me about that about ten times already. <laughs> yes, I'm, yes I'm aware yeah. and that's like a frontage road like one of those frontage roads that would be parallel Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So should we talk about the pedestrian connections onto the site? And I think Will's point about the internal ones and not building them totally makes sense to me, yeah. but it, having them shown on, on the plan so that when it does happen, mm -hmm. the planning board members at that time, whoever they are, will know that that conversation took yeah. place. Yeah, I think also because the, the road access is, that's an easement for Irving, it still belongs to Riverside Landing. Okay, so, um, yes, sorry. Now, and and I, I don't know if you guys have thoughts on where that pedestrian, to be consistent with the other side, where that pedestrian link could be out to Tenney Mountain, um, whether it stays in that, that access, that main access point, or, and somebody would walk out from the convenience store. Um, but I raised that. Yeah, is there, <clears throat> Is there future consideration to have Tenney Mountain Highway become a pedestrian way? I mean, is that what it, we keep talking about bringing people out to the highway? And yeah, we do. Honestly, I don't know if I really want to walk on the highway, but I, you know, and that's just kind of me being candid. But I don't know if 
Because there's no sidewalk. Well, there's no yeah. sidewalk. And, <laughs> well, and, and people do every morning. Like, where do I go? We see people out there every morning um, who don't have a choice, who don't have a vehicle. And so, and I think, as we pointed out with the last entrance, we have to, we want to create this. We don't want to create a problem where that continues to be the case. You can't, even if you need to. Um, so I'm looking for consistency across the site. That's my big issue. Well, I think it is a chicken or the egg type of thing that, I mean, people aren't going to walk there until we start making access, mm -hmm. and we've got to start somewhere. Um, and we're kind of in master plan limbo right now, but, um, but it is part of our, you know, our new master plan is to make sure we have pedestrian and bike access um, across town, and I think that this is this is the way we we start to make sure that happens. So we can't go back in time. Well, even though I did try and go back in time a little while ago, we can't really go back in time to fix, you know, some not put uh, put sidewalks in. But anyway, yeah. I can I guess I can speak to our our thoughts on that. I mean, you know, right now we have sidewalks here, I believe, and I think there's sidewalk on this mm -hmm. side as well. Um, <clears throat> because of the way this site kind of worked out, um, as we just discussed. <clears throat> this the alignment of this driveway was <clears throat> kind of set by what's happening across the street. So um, to to maintain what DOT wanted us to do in aligning this driveway, it kind of shrunk this site down a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so we didn't have any room really in this area to do a, a walkway. But I think what we would envision is is in future development here. There's parking over here. You know, we could create kind of a. a a greenway with with a walkway that would connect down to the highway um, <clears throat> and as we talked about having you know we, we could I know you'd like to see it on the plan and maybe it's I'm not sure how to show it concretely um, no pun intended. right but yeah. future pedestrian connection but, but like but we could note it because I think you know if, if somehow there becomes a building in a weird spot or, or there mm -hmm. becomes multiple buildings out here then the pedestrian connectivity may be different, but if, if we just note, you know, that the intent is we want to connect this to this, and we want to connect this to this, and you know, I mean, I think that, that works we, for me. We could, yep. we could um, go along with that, and, and we will keep that in mind. And you know, I'll be hopefully working with Mike if he doesn't uh, kick me to the curb here. So we'll, um, you know, we can um, keep that in mind with future development, and we understand, you know, what you guys are looking for there. Um, but I think. <coughs> Our best spot's going to be along this side, actually, um, just because of the compactness of that site right now. Does the rest of the board, any of the, anyone else on the board have any comments about pedestrian access? Um, all right, so we're good with pedestrian connectivity. We have another topic of discussion questions. I have a question, if I may. And this may, is there an Irving rep here? Are you the Irving rep? On these, there's some landscaping, you know, some low shrubs and everything. Who maintains those once they're installed? Because in my observation, a lot of times they're never maintained. And, the, and especially if there's flowers, which do take some maintenance, does, do you typically have somebody uh, so for the record, uh, Jennifer Dangle with Irving Oil. Um, yes, we, we we will hire a, an operator for the site. Uh, we don't have an operator secured yet, but you know we, a lot of our Canadian New England sites are run by uh, Circle K. We have some sites with uh, Red Lantern, so we would pick a, an operator, be it them or someone else, and it would be their responsibility to uh, maintain the site, cut the grass, and a lot of the flowers but we you know we, we do hold a high standard to our sites you know we, we don't we pick up the trash we, we keep the washrooms clean that's our big you know, our, our big focus is have clean washrooms and that would extend to the site so we would ensure that that was in their maintenance contract to keep it uh looking up to up to stuff any other questions about site aesthetics Plantings, um, trying to group everything into topics here. <laughs> um, I may have one question okay. on the exterior. The, the retaining wall that might be as tall as 12 foot in the picture, um, could any of those cars, if someone's not paying attention, just drive forward, or is there going to be retaining? Um, <laughs> there is, there is a, um, 
There's a guardrail. Guardrail. As well as a pedestrian fence. There's okay. a six foot. Uh, it doesn't show up in the rendering, but um, okay. we have shown a, a, a six foot fence at the top of the, the wall in the back. And then a six foot fence and a guardrail on this one where the vehicles are. So in the back, there's no, no way that vehicles can really get back there. So a six foot wall on top of the 12 foot? Sorry, six foot chain link fence. So that pedestrians won't fall over the edge. Right. I think it's in, it's in both, right? Yeah. It's on it's a, it's on the top of both walls. Um, so uh, yeah, if you look at uh, two point one along the you know kind of parallel to each of the walls, if you just line that with an X, mm -hmm. um, it's also a six foot. Six foot um, do you want to talk about lighting yeah yep <clears throat> um i appreciate the detail of the dark sky lighting um, in keeping with the ordinance and the fact that you provided the the kind of illumination map. there's light trespass onto Tenny Mountain Highway is does DOT ever have issues with that or is that common I'm asking because I don't know it doesn't look like there's much it's just like it didn't look like it left the site otherwise um, but I just it just comes out here across the line <clears throat> not that there's not light trespass in other places <laughs> around town, I'm sure. What page is the lighting on, Steve? Oh, is that for the... The one for the... Sorry. This one here. Talking the, to myself. The here. hatch one, the hatch marked one. Um, I don't see the page oh, okay. number. It's pretty far into the packet. Yeah. Actually, and then there's another one after, I guess. <coughs> So the one, the one that we did for the driveway, um, yeah, doesn't appear to have anything going into the road. But I think the one you're looking at is the the other the one, RLA plan towards right. the back. Um, yeah, I mean some of those are zeros, but you're right. Some of them are point one foot candles into the, the road. Um, you know, honestly, I have not run into that with DOT. I think that those can be rear shielded. So it might just be as simple as in your next round of discussions with DOT if, if that's something that we want to uh, run mm -hmm. by them. Or if, I'm pretty sure that the fixtures can just have a backer put on so okay. that the so projections backwards would not be eliminated. It's, mm -hmm. it's the same as the non projection optical and non projection back. I'm well, just thinking we're in a state highway and you know what it's like to drive by a gas canopy or any kind of commercial activity it's that dark to light type of thing and we still have some pretty dark sections of Tenny Mountain Highway so if it could be if it could be eliminated that easily that'd be awesome other lighting questions comments anything else about the retaining wall Only like going through this at some point with Will's, uh, giving Will a chance to talk about what you said, because we haven't had a chance to read your memo. So would the board like to go through the engineer's comments uh, with Will's response? I, mean, I think we I should. Would, yeah. No, I, I would as well. Okay. Um, and also just as a administrative point, um, Mike wanted me to ask that he, he's listed as Mike McGinley partner on there, and uh, it's not really a partner. It's just just him. So if we can I just take that off. Anybody of who wants to be a partner? Included <laughs> 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 you know, you your imaginary friend. He has no partners. So. <laughs> I'm sorry. Generally, with an LLC, there are various partners. So yeah. standard. I'm, my mistake. In this case. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So. Um, as stated, we received this a couple of days ago from Mike and um, Vignali. 
Um, so the first comment is with respect to um, a ground groundwater protection plan um, for the underground storage tanks, and that's something that MHF will be providing um, as part of um, presumably the state permitting, but we, we certainly will provide it prior to the building permit. It's not prepared at this point, but that's something that we, we'd certainly um, could see as a condition. Um, the second one, um, we had omitted the um, modular wall detail. Um, so we've included that in the set that you have now. There's a modular wall detail um, on sheet 3.4, and it has the designation that um, the wall is to be designed by a, a structural engineer um, and approved by the town prior to construction. Um, number three was a comment uh, regarding the surface treatment of the utility access connection road. Um, we had shown it with a hatching that reflected gravel, but um, we hadn't really noted that. So um, we've included a typical section of it as well as um, a note on the sheet. Um, note three also um, asked about the gates. So there was, you know, there's an existing gate at the east end, and um, as I mentioned, we've, we've proposed one at the west end as well. Um, but that was a good comment. Um, there was an inadvertent note. Uh, number four is regarding um, bituminous versus concrete sidewalks. Um, we had an inadvertent note that um, called out one of the sidewalks to be bituminous, so we've we just removed that note. Essentially, the intent is that they're all concrete sidewalks. Uh, number five, um, there were some discrepancies in our um, typical pavement sections, and um, there were a few issues. But essentially, to explain it, um, we're proposing a, a thicker pavement section for the main driveway. Um, we're anticipating more truck traffic and just want to have a, um, a more robust section for that portion. Um, so the, the part that's um, on the proposed lot on the site for parking and circulation will have a certain section that's shown on the MHF plans. And then we have um, a different section basically shown on our plans. And we've added a note um, on, let's see, sheet uh, 2.1 that shows, you know, just notes, um, see sheet 3.4 for this typical section, you know, sh see the other sheet, the other section. Um, so let's see, number six, um, there was a, a, a note on a typical detail that referred to mass DOT for the guardrail. Um, we will remove that. Um, <clears throat> The intent is to, to provide DOT specification guardrail. Um, number seven. Um, so number seven, um, Mike was was concerned about uh, the grading we had proposed in the back here. Um, so we have a three to one slope here. And then we transition it to a two to one in this section. You can see how the contours get a little closer together. Um, the reason for that, well, it's a couple of reasons, but we wanted to maintain this culvert on the property. Um, so the culvert outlet daylights before it gets to the property line. Um, but also, the intent here is to, to fill all of this in essentially, and this wall would project a little bit further to facilitate fill over here. Um, so just as part of the overall development, we know that we want to um, have these elevations right here be, be where they are, essentially existing grade. Um, so we had tightened up the slope there, and, and Mike was concerned that, you know, we may have some stability issues because it's in the floodplain. It's going to see a lot of water, potentially. Um, so what we proposed is um, we added a note that we're going to just provide a permanent reinforcement mat there in lieu of like a temporary straw mat, so it'll be a, a, a much uh, more robust uh, turf reinforcement. Um, and then, you know, that's going to get removed in the future development. Uh, but in the meantime, it'll provide a more stable um, situation that'll be essentially like stone, but we'll be able to vegetate it. Um, let's see, number eight on the next sheet. Um, this was with respect to um, 
filling and the floodplain comp. Um, as I kind of explained earlier, um, and I noted here in the explanation, um, we're working under AOT 0673, which was done a while back by, by Steve Smith, um, to uh, in included the excavation and the fill within the floodplain um, to prepare this pad, pad for development. Um, that that floodplain report was prepared as part of the AOT application where we're basically um, we are um, working under that same permit currently for the fill portion essentially just so the way that this this site is working there there's, there's an overarching fill permit that was an alteration of terrain so right now Mike has authorization to basically fill the pad if he, as he wants to, as he, as the development happens. And then we go back each time that we develop with impervious surfaces. When we add pavement and buildings, we have to go back to AOT for separate AOT permits. Um, but essentially, what we're referring to is that that fill pad authorization that was was done before. So um, we've been excavating along in the in the. Well, let me show. The, let me go back to the overview here. Um, so it's not on this sheet, but but basically this area is where you know, the compensation is happening. So the mitigation that there's there's a a hole that's basically being excavated out here to compensate for the fill that's being placed here. And so um, I I talked. I, we went back and forth with Mike on emails on this, um, and I think. Um, we'll be able to get him the documentation that he needs to, to demonstrate that we're um, in compliance with that existing permit. Um, well, is, this, um, is this like a third party analysis that he's asking for in his part of this on eight? I don't think so. I think he's just asking for us to, um, let's see. He didn't say anything about a third party. Analysis. No, but he says a floodplain fill mitigation analysis must be submitted it seemed pretty clear. If not, additional floodplain mitigation will be required. He didn't say who would do the analysis, so I'm just wondering. Yeah, he did say that, didn't he? Seems like he is asking for an analysis. And when I emailed with him, um, you know, I don't have it with me. I'm sorry, Brian. You were comp copied on those, I think. But basically, I was I was just suggesting that it was. I think we need to provide the analysis that was previously done, I think is what we need to do. And so um, I didn't hear back from, from Mike before the hearing, but I think that that's what um, we'll need to do. Um, but essentially, uh, as far as, um, you know, what's going on there, it's, like I said, it's basically a one-to-one -one compensation that we're doing. Um, and then number nine is he's just recommending that um, that uh, looks like the town defer to the state in terms of what happens in the right of way, um, and we'll be working with DOT um, <clears throat> on that on the driveways. That kind of runs down his comments. Any questions on that on the letter? Other questions from the board? I always got more. Uh, yep. I scrambled to go through this, to be honest, because we just got it tonight. Right. Um, and so I feel like kind of brushed and wanting to put stuff out there for you guys to chew on. Mm -hmm. um, the w one other thing I guess I would raise, because Will addressed a lot of things before I asked anything, but um, when the, you have the culverts that go under the road, that temporary road that's going to bring services across. When you fill that in, are those culverts, those culverts are above the services, right? The culverts are below the services. So how do, how do you deal with that? Like you need to go to fill in the site and you have these two culverts, do you just leave them? I think we probably will fill them with flowable fill with okay. concrete. Um, is what I would suggest. You don't you want know. to disturb everything you've already no, done. No, we would, we would leave them in place and we would fill them with what I'd suggest is flowable fill. We'll cap, we'll cap one end pump it full of uh, basically okay. liquefied concrete and then cap the other end um, and then just bury them. Kind of like you would. That's how we would abandon most utilities in place. 
Okay. How far along are you with Plymouth Water and Sewer in negotiating your interconnection with their mains? We are a little further along. Um, we, we've submitted our, our application and our plans to them. Um, our understanding is that they're kind of holding them until we gain approval from the board here. Um, so you know, we, we'd love to, to gain final approval tonight um, so we can continue to advance our permitting with the spring coming up and all that. So. And as they have in the past, are they holding you to be responsible for eternal maintenance of your interconnections to the, all of this construction? Yes. Are they? Other questions from the board? Madam Chair, mm -hmm. I would like to move to accept this as complete and approve. Okay. The proposal. Do we have a second? So we've already accepted it as complete. So, mm -hmm. so amend. Move to approve. Approve. I would second that. With, um, uh, I'm forgetting the terminology. Number eight to the satisfaction of Mike Pignale. Number eight on what, Mike? Um, uh, the response mitigation. horizons. Oh. Mitigation to the yeah. floodplain. Just so that Mike would sign off on number eight as a- Number uh, eight. What's the word I'm looking for? As a condition? Condition, yeah. Okay. I think I'm- Oh, mistaken. yes, as the- um, for, I guess I'm both. Right. <laughs> I think we have a- Sorry, we'll slow. So that was your second? With conditions. Yeah, and then whatever other boilerplate. There's so also a condition for number one that Will suggested. Yeah. Um, and I also think that we had a couple other conditions we've discussed is um, making sure there's no light trespass to the highway um, and putting some sort of indication along the access road that indicates that we will be there will be pedestrian access in the future. Um, I think those are the things that we've discussed. And at, out the Teddy Mountain Highway. Yeah, okay. yep. Are we gonna have discussion before we vote? Yes. Do you want that now? I am ready, I mean, yes. Unless there's other conditions. I just, it's helpful to have the conditions listed. So yes, before uh, we. Should, as another condition, should we have this stoplight um, figure uh, removed from the plan for now? We can certainly do that. I think it was an inadvertent symbol that right. got left on from another. Yeah. Is that even on the submittal? I'm, it, I'm not sure if it's on the submittal plan. I don't plans think it's on the submittal. On the, it might yeah. just be on the, the the green and yeah the, the presentation piece. Okay. We'll check and make sure that it's not on the other plans as well. So we have a motion and a second. Um, let's discuss. So I don't feel comfortable voting favor of this tonight having just received these and tried to plow through and I think we actually got I, I appreciate what the applicant did and what Will did to try to hustle to get responses to KV's stuff um, but that's just my I just wanted to voice that um, and I you guys can proceed as you wish but I would like to offer I think it's one of the best proposals that I've seen come before a board in a long time um, this is slightly an aside because the applicant did come with a non-binding preliminary discussion um, and we even discussed that the try trying to make this engineering um, the town engineer make that process happen a little faster because we just I mean we're looking at this the first time too. all the, the engineers report um, is this is sort of aside from this proposal is there any way to make this process happen faster so we can all see this stuff and respond to it or have responses to it instead of in the five minutes before we start well, the, the, the engineering questions came in late to the party mm -hmm. so um, those things you know first you submit it to us then they go out for review and then they come back and the time frame is set by that okay um, I think that a lot of the uh, 
questions about engineering that were originally raised at the non-binding presentation were answered. Um, and then it became a fight among engineers. I mean, you know, everybody's checking everybody's work. It's typical. Um, you know, it, it's, it's uh, kind of interesting well, to me. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a very technical field. And I know you guys have a real good grasp of it, but that's why kind of we have a consulting engineer to have our backs in this for the fine details. So if, if well, with that, in, with that in mind, he raised a pretty big question on number eight yeah. that we don't have an answer to. Yes. And but I think I'm surprised there aren't other people, other members of the conservation commission, just because of the scrutiny that the development has, has been through. I just don't want on our watch to pass over number eight without an answer. And I would agree with Steve, and, and um, not that we can't make a decision, but that that's a big item. Yeah. And from experience with the applicant that's here before us, uh, he works extremely well with Mike Vignali. And Mike Vignali is not going to be um, intimidated or anything. He knows what he needs, and the applicant has worked real well with accommodating Mike. And I, I feel, I would feel very comfortable with leaving it in that condition in Mike's hands to decide when he's um, uh, secure with what's going on to that be the last, we can say everything else is fine and Mike can make the decision, yes, he's now um, met what I need on item eight, whatever other conditions, versus having to bring engineers back for another meeting versus having to have Irving back here again. And I think it's, it's our duty to do what we can to make uh, the process easy to be known as uh, not a, a, a I'll stop. <laughs> Isn't that kind of what a condition, putting a condition on there does is yeah. it, we're basically saying that yes, we'll approve this as long as that condition is met. Typically, a lot of conditions in the building permit world are are done in phases, but the ultimate stick is the withholding of a certificate of occupancy. Whereas at this stage of the game, you can condition that no work would be begun until that question was satisfied. Um, I think it just in general, it's from what I've read, it it's proceed with caution when you put too many conditions on an approval, mm -hmm. um, because then you're you're putting too much on the. Uh, you're just relinquishing too much control instead of things that should be addressed at this place instead of past uh, post approval. Mm -hmm. um, Steve, is there a condition that you could see that would satisfy you in trying to make sure number eight is covered? I mean, I think we're close. I think we need to know what Mike meant right. and what the standard is for analysis. Mm -hmm. Like, does he need? A new analysis or the analysis that will reference could that just be provided and that would satisfy I don't know it's outside of my one thing um, that makes me feel a lot more comfortable is that we're not reinventing the wheel this has happened I'm not sure how many times it's already happened everybody's been okay with it it's nothing new so I think we've already been there and uh, I feel very comfortable with my candle from here And if, if I might, I just, um, I would say, I would kind of reiterate that we've worked very well with Mike in the past and, um, you know, we'll be certain to get him what he needs and we're, not, we're certainly not trying to um, put Phil in the floodplain that's going to create an issue, right? So we, we certainly want to be working within our existing permits and um, that's fully our intent. Um, if, if he wants to see the existing plan, that we can provide that and if he needs additional analysis, you know, I'm pretty confident that we can provide him with that as well in a timely manner. So, um, you know, I, we would encourage you to approve it with that condition. I'd like to hear from other members of the board. Do you guys have anything to say about this? I, you know, it's, I think all those other conditions except for number eight are just you know, those are, you know, take a, the street light, which is in a couple of these things I noticed. But um, I just want to make sure what we're agreeing to on number eight, and that's that you'll talk to Mike Vignali's and 
clarify exactly what it is he wants and then follow through on that what I can recommend that we is that we get uh, written approval back from Mike right so we'll, we'll provide this letter that we have provided and if he needs additional information um, and maybe you know after this conversation I'm probably gonna call him up tomorrow and just just clarify exactly what he wants right and then um, we'll provide him with that in a written form you know you guys will be copied on everything presumably he'll respond back to us in written form and then that way we'll have everything on the record that would be my suggestion so any approval that we make is basically nothing's going to happen until Mike signs off mm -hmm. on that condition it's basically he determines whether our approval actually happens or not and it, it might not if he's not happy so I'm Steve? I got what I wanted. I got you guys to talk. <laughs> I mean, really, I just don't want us to not talk at the planning board level and then right. approve something. Um, I think the conditions that everyone's outlined make sense. I think, Jack, your endorsement of it as a quality site plan is great. Um, I'll stand by the fact I would like more time to review this. Mm -hmm. I feel like I could have missed stuff. I don't think I did a good job reviewing it. But um, if you're comfortable going forward, I will not stand in the way. Can we just review for the board that if we choose to not, not not approve, but not approve this evening, what steps happen? So we would continue this to a date certain, which we could do at our work session if we cho if we yeah. chose. Yes. Um, we would have to reopen the public hearing at that point, or could yes. we? Okay. All right. So that, just to make sure. Um, and I will say that I know that the state planning handbook does suggest not not just a, you know seeing an a, an application and just accepting that evening that they definitely suggest taking taking our time with it um, um, that said um, we do have an applicant that came before us with a like I said the preliminary discussion non-binding discussion um, a month or so two months ago um, so and you do have a motion and a second on the floor yeah, yeah. All right, so the motion on the floor is to approve this application with the. I accept the modification. Um, do do we need to review the we got the the conditions? The conditions, yeah, they're written down somewhere. I think um, maybe where I got it was was to satisfy the mitigation concerns, which is number eight in the letter. Um, dated the 13th uh, with written approval from town engineer and then we have the pedestrian connectivity and the remove the light trespass to the highway yes and any other those are notes on the plan so it's a little bit different okay you know than this one which is could be a stopper like Steve said and number one the groundwater protection yes. plan also number one I had that in oh, there. okay thanks but that that would be forthcoming that would just okay it's almost a boilerplate condition okay all right so we have a motion on the, on the or the table not sure yet um all those in favor please signify by saying aye aye aye, aye. aye. all those opposed all right. so the motion the um application has been approved thank you very thank much you. thank you congratulations thank you, thank you for answering so many questions yeah <laughs> that's what we're here for we appreciate it I did see him come in. in. Yep. Yep. I was going to supposed to give you a heads up. You might show up. Yeah. No, that's good because um, my ability to take coherent notes right now is. Well, I forget, nothing else, just introducing her. Yeah, well, in case you need more paper, this oh. is a full size copy of what you guys just got. Okay, but that's uh, We're going to give another one after you know, okay. these comments. So, but just, so this, this replaces so these two. Okay. That's what we, we provide you tonight in, in half size. Right, and uh, this is all for the subdivision, so. Um, Yes, and the checks. Okay, no problem. Congratulations.
So I'm leaving town tomorrow, so I had to do all four. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Very thorough. Nailed it. Very thorough. I just wanted to make sure we got it done. Okay. Right. Yeah. One way or the other, cover my son. She's hot, man. You think it's hot? Yeah. I was going to say, just, is, is it me? <laughs> So up Painting next time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is um, the continuing discussion of the master plan. And we do have our volunteer who has been doing the formatting. He is here. Um, so I sent around the most recent Sorry. version that he sent to us or sent to me um, a couple days ago. Can you call him forward and introduce him? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, we just want to grab a chair. I think we'll probably, yeah, if you can figure out how to detach one of those chairs. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, you can come right up to the table. You don't have to, you don't have to sit in the interrogation. We're going to go get that light and shine it right in your eyes, too. So. Time to the chair. Yeah. All right. So this is Polly. Nice to meet everybody. I'll let you say your full name because... Um, full name is Brendan Polly Chronopolis. I would prefer if you all call me Polly. Yeah. It makes it easier <laughs> for everybody. <laughs> That's why I had you say it. Um, so Polly gave us another draft. I have comments from Bill um, that he emailed me earlier today. Um, but um, I think it might be helpful for Polly to hear some of the comments that we've got. Um, so I can go through Bill's list. Um, and I can forward you his email as well. I just want to make sure we get the rest of the board to hear his comments and I'll agree on them. Um, so I'm, I guess I'll just jump right into Bill's comments. Um, they're, yeah, they're font related, some of them, many of them. <laughs> He's very font particular. Very font particular. Um, huh. But he has picked up on some, um, some inconsistencies in the font. So um, he does not like Times New Roman. I don't mean to pick on Bill while he's not here. <laughs> Minion Pro. He do. And he, but he doesn't like Minion Pro because it looks very much like yes. Roman. <laughs> I hope he watches this. Um, <laughs> usually does. Um, so he prefers Calibri or Arial to Minion Pro. Um, I'm just going to throw it out there that I prefer Calibri to Arial. <laughs> and I have no problem with Minion Pro or Times New Roman myself. But... Um, Yes, I'm also particular about fonts, but I didn't pick up on any of this. Um, Bill, also, this, so that was a general comment. Um, I think that there was something and there was another, oh, there was uh, different fonts, some other fonts picked up later on. Um, I think most of the board, we liked the green background. Bill thought it was too much. Okay. Um, but that's, that's what Bill says, so we got to sort of strike this as everyone else that's here or leave it be. So. Um, Please respond to these comments so we can. You guys I'd, have any? No, not you. Sorry, the board. Yeah. Well, personally, I'd like to, you know, satisfy the majority mm -hmm. um, with the work I'm doing. So, you know, I'm doing this for you guys. So whatever you guys need me to do, I'm more than happy to make any changes. And I would just add, as we go into the changes here, having gone through some changes the last time we met, um, in fairness to the board who wants to see the master plan adopted, and in fairness to him who's going to evaporate in a few weeks. Um, we need to be careful with the level of detail we get into because we'll spin our wheels and he'll be gone. Mm -hmm. And then, and I don't know how to use in design. Yep. Um, so I think we need to think about. Unfortunately, I do. Speed. Yeah, it'll fall on you. <laughs> um, okay. So his comment was about having the green border on the chapter headings, right? And and losing it on the rest of them. Mm -hmm. When did he send these comments? He sent it to, he just sent it to me oh, and to okay. and to Brian. So, um, special. Yeah. To avoid having a email discussion yeah. that was yeah. not part of the record. So I'm bringing it to the record now. So. That's fair. Um, okay. So, yes. That was it? That's no, no, no. There's more. It's, it's, it's like a, you know, a little more on the page. 
Um, Bill doesn't like the this front. We Polly and I talked about a picture, and we just said, "Let's just grab this picture, this picture, which looks great here." I don't think it captures it for the front. Um, I don't think so. Can it's the orientation of the picture. Yeah. I didn't think can so someone either. choose? Can someone find a picture for the? How about the one with the fog? The one with the clock tower and the. That's the one you mentioned last time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's an Do you awesome know which one that is? I don't know. Yes. If there's, I thought maybe there's a reason we okay. couldn't use it. Is it in that drive, that Google Drive? It is. Yes. Okay. okay. No, we had discussed the cover and we thought that maybe going with the picture that was on the um, Chapter One Vision, that, that page, uh, just putting it onto the cover so it had a little bit of consistency. Right. Thought it might have been a good idea. I just don't, like I said, I think the dimensions of the picture mm -hmm. just kind of. Don't work out very well. Right. Mm -hmm. um, any other comments? I mean, this will be the front page. Do we need a, the town seal? Are we good just with this? Um, we probably need an adopted blank. Adopted June 20. It's a good idea. So, um, yeah. I'm going to say 2018. I guess I can't say June. I really hope it's 2018. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, let's see the timeline. I think Bill's comment on the timeline was that we wanted that to be in the section that was that it represents. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So on um, the 2018 update of the master plan, and I think if that could take up like a like a third of a page. Um, that or the timeline. The take timeline. Up the the page. timeline okay. take up a third of a page and have it go um, somewhere in a logical place in the, the 2018 update of the master plan. Cool. Okay. That's easy. <laughs> yeah. Good yeah. drag and drop. Um, there is a <clears throat> capitalization, a couple of capitalization errors in the timeline. Okay. Um, let's see. We prefer to have the pictures interspersed through the whole document versus the insertion of four pictures that took up the whole bottom of the page. And that was, I think, what we were trying to do is have a on that um, an infographic that kind of covered the vision. Um, so um, I don't know if someone else can describe that a little a little better. So. Well, the only thing that I had had said was as far as the pictures, uh, people that don't know the town won't know what, you know, what this is, what that is. I just thought something under, you know, like this guy playing the piano here. If you know who he is and it's downtown Plymouth or, you know, just something in reference. Yeah. yeah, so they just, it's, they don't just look at it and say, hmm. Which brings me up to my question. Yeah. Polly, what's the best way, because I think that is, because that's my responsibility so how do I get those what's the best way for me to get captions can I sit down with you that might be the easiest yeah thing. that's fine um, so maybe before we leave figure out a time we can get together and okay. I can you know I'll look at these things I'll come up with captions and then we'll sit down and I'll let you know where it sounds great yeah and Bonnie that was something that was on the list we just hadn't have the text to insert it yet mm -hmm. so okay. um, I tried to leave a little bit of room yeah I can okay. play around with it a little bit mm -hmm. more but so to the infographic, infographic yeah. idea I, I, I love this updated look mm -hmm. that it just, the pictures make it less text dense. Like if you look at page three, that just looks really text dense mm -hmm. to me. So what I feel like, my idea anyway, in, in incorporating infographics or pictures is to just sort of make it more visually friendly mm -hmm. by making it less text dense. So I don't really care if it's an infographic okay. or a photo. I think this looks nice. Um, what I liked about the infographics and some of the other um, example plans that we saw was on the idea of the timeline where we took a piece of information or a set of information and represented it um, in a visual to complement the text that said the same thing. And I don't think we came up with an infographic that did the same thing with the vision as we did with the time mm -hmm. timeline. Um, so I don't have a particular suggestion there. I think at this point, maybe we need to be refining what we have here as opposed to trying to create something that's um, super duper fancy. Yep. Um, so 
Yeah. Um, page two in under what the master plan is last time we had talked about which lists 166 mm -hmm. we were gonna say something a little more soft yep um, I think we just crossed out which lists 166 recommended actions or more than yeah I had it in my notes. 60 it was in my notes I think which I don't have with me I don't either which lists we would just say which list recommended actions that works yeah yeah so take out 166 because we don't know that that number is actually true right <laughs> and none of Good us idea. want to count <laughs> want that too yes please thank you <laughs> um okay so there was some work with um re removing lines um maybe taking out some bolded things overall i, I mean i think it i think it looks great um, but uh, yeah, I like the idea of the timeline maybe vertically along the along the side, mm -hmm. one of the sides. I like that too. It would break up the text as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here's a thought: if there are these few changes, you know, consistent fonts and a couple of the other specifics that were mentioned, mm -hmm. um, and you're going to change the cover. Mm -hmm. Does that give him enough permission to now go and format the next two sections so that we can see something yeah. that comes together and so that I'm thinking for you, Chris, too, like that you don't have to go through the captions, the two of you guys don't have to meet three times to go through captions, and maybe you could do it all at once. Yeah, I, that would certainly work better for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you're, if you're leaving, so, um, you know, we got to do this before you leave, and, I, and I'm going to need time. Because there's a couple of pictures I may need to ask um, for clarification. I think there's one aerial photograph of the, I think it's the airport, but I'm not 100% positive. Right. So I just want to make sure if I have a question about what I'm looking at that I, I can get it is. second opinion. Yeah. So, the airport. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's one of those fly-ins that they do in the fall. Yeah. What about the green? Can we just get, to, does everyone like the green everywhere? I, I like I, the green actually, everywhere. I, I like the green. I think it's great. Um, I think, though, when we're doing the green foliage shots mm. that it that it it uh, it becomes invisible like it bleeds in yeah, it, oh. it just it it kind of subsumes the image so maybe on the i think that's just that's an issue cover. on the cover just yeah. put a border around it either okay. a white or a, a, t a thin black yeah. border will mm -hmm. will eliminate Easy that. um can we make sure it says plymouth master plan 2018 on the oh, does heading? it not? Yeah. Oh, it was supposed to be 2017. <laughs> 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 but, um, and then we need a table of contents as well. Yes, we. He you mentioned and that I discussed today. that we yeah. were going to do that yeah. at the end. And a signature oh, page. Yeah. We're yeah. going to we'll put it at the, end. at the end of the process, not the yes, end. Yes, the, the end of the process. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. And um, and then the acknowledgments will build. I just the, gonna, typically a signature page is that just witnessed by the clerk or is the board sign off on it it can be some towns don't even do a signature page yeah i know we did it for the zoning ordinance many years ago and haven't since even yeah. though you know it's it's one of the steps so you could include it as a note on the acknowledgments page like you're saying okay i mean you know it, it's a very small yep statement that's usually on a very large page right you know so it, so could, it be, could be at the bottom and have right. a stamp on it and it would be part some of boards the like to still sign them um, but most don't. You can just list the board members at the time so you know who to chase down. Okay. Um, so in the end, on the, um, and I'll work to build that, um, we'll need the current board members. We could do that in the acknowledgement page, sort of mm -hmm. board, current board members and then other board members that have, that have helped. I think it's yeah, really staff, important. North Country Council. Right, did, yeah. you should have a copy of that. Maybe. Yeah, no, you did get that to me. Okay. Buried in my brain somewhere. <laughs> it's in my computer, so yeah, I can no, dig that like, out. <laughs> Between the two of them, we'll race. How's yeah. that? Um, okay. Can we talk about timeline just for a second? Because I think it'd be good for Polly. Timeline, Polly. like the timeline in here, or just the timeline? Uh, just the, the timeline okay. for the project. <laughs> okay. Yes. So, because I'd like you to hear whatever they <laughs> say. Yeah. So he's about to go on spring break. So technically, he doesn't have to work on this at all. That's his choice if he chooses to, but. Um, you're back. It's the last week of March. He's got two other chapters to incorporate, you know, now that he knows what, what it is the board likes. Mm -hmm. um, 
what's a reasonable timeline for you to work on getting those other two chapters so that we can get close to like a, you know, a complete draft? Mm. Well, unfortunately, I'm going to Texas and I don't have a working laptop right now. Um, but I would say... Do you need two weeks when you get back? Do you need... To finish this or the next two chapters? The whole thing. The whole thing? All three sections together. That's it, like uh, probably two or three weeks. So this, now, have if, you looked at the other chapters yet? This one is definitely the most, vi it's going to be the most visual of all of them. The third chapter is pretty much just tables. Yeah. So, which is so fun in your design. <laughs> but, um, so if that's the case, though, that brings us to at least middle of April before mm -hmm. it gets to the board for you guys to look at it, get your thoughts together, back that to Polly have. to make changes. So can we aim for April 19th is our, um, our meeting, our third Thursday meeting in April. Okay. Yeah. And then... <clears throat> Um, and do we get it ahead of that, or are you saying you want him to deliver it by the 19th? It's nice if we can get it ahead of time, if that's possible. Mm -hmm. It seems like everyone's able to review it. If I'm sorry, I should I meant to send it out last night, and I forgot. Um, can you get it to me by the Tuesday, the, the 17th before? Yeah, it'll likely be the Monday before that, but yeah. That's OK. <laughs> oh, it's good. Yeah. 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 I, don't, okay. I don't have time to even send emails on Tuesdays and Thursdays most of the time, so. And um, in the meantime, any questions, um, you could send to, just send an email to me and Steve, and we mm -hmm. can reach out to others, and you'll coordinate with Chris um, to get the captioned yep. language. Sounds great. So then if, that, if we get a refined draft with his help by the beginning of May, I'm saying some of this, Mike, for your benefit, because you haven't heard some of these conversations. Then we want to put the draft out. We want to put it on the on the website and give people a chance to read it before we have any public hearings or do any of that stuff. So the idea was to let it be vetted by the public, people who went to hearings two years ago and think the master plan probably is long gone, and it's not, um, to give people a chance to look and see that whatever it is that they heard talked about made it in or made it in and it's modified or whatever the case may be. Um, but that means that you're going to probably be on the hook, Rebecca, for any change. If people come to a hearing eventually and they do have thoughts and the board decides to accept changes, mm -hmm. that means we need to do it. Yes. So we need to do a really thorough copy edit before, um, so that we're right. not, so that we're not, so I'm not trying to bust into this to, um, to just change, you know, put an apostrophe in somewhere. Yep. Um, and then I'll need to work with you to make sure it gets packaged and on a thumb drive to me so I get the design files, not just a PDF. So. I'll give you everything. I've been saving them all. So. so do we ask our copy editor, Chris or Jack, to do that after the 19th? Is that? Yes. Okay. Yep. It, and just you know, remember, I'm leaving on the 19th. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> of course you are. Try to go on vacation. It, which is so unfortunate. Um, it's just how it, that shook out. I can copy edit it, too. Um, okay. But, I mean, I can work up till the, like, um, so if you send that thing out on Monday, I'll definitely be able to participate okay. in that, give feedback. So if you get a printed copy, get, get it to me, then I can copy edit and I can just get you a hard copy of. I mean, uh, we have so. the content. Can, yeah. can Chris look at the content? Can you look at it next week before Polly gets back from spring break? Chap section two and three, or chapter sure. two and three, whatever it is, of volume one? Yeah. It's the table and it's the other chapter. And, we, and just mostly for, um, you know, uh, proofreading, editing, that type of thing. And it's what you and Jack have been working on, yeah, so yeah. I don't know to yeah. what degree. Yeah, so, sure. Rebecca, did you receive my input on ch Chapter 2? It was, it was a flamer. It was all red. <laughs> I don't know if I have that. You wouldn't. You would remember. You wouldn't remember. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I wouldn't count on me remembering it at this point. But uh. it, it, it basically highlighted. Started off with highlighting the font. Mm -hmm. um, there was just a mix mash of font throughout the entire thing, and I, I recommended New Times of Roman. That is the government <laughs> standard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> why Bill doesn't like it yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know I don't I'm I, no pride in authorship <laughs> I don't care 
It just seems like we should get that all cleaned up before we yeah. ask him yeah. to format. I'm not so much worried. About, I mean, I want to make sure we're giving Polly direction with font for this, but yes. as far as different fonts in the document we're giving him to put in there, it just is, that doesn't necessarily matter. I mean, I, I would think. He can change it when he yeah. formats. I'm trying to stick with two, like okay. one for the chapter heads and yep. then yep. another for the standard. rest of the document. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. For the yeah. most part. And if there's anything that's different from that, that's a mistake on my part. Yeah. I just think if we can get the content that's been vetted by planning board subcommittee yep. to him. Okay. So that can you send me your I'll resend it. Document in red. Yes. Yes. <laughs> resend it please. And uh and I'll, I'll make maybe sure maybe email sure to in get red too, so it says yeah. Yeah. And then um and then I will send it to you, Chris. I'll just send it to both of us, I think. I'll send it to both of you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Once it's in a form that the, comes back from Polly to the board, and the board goes through it and you know does the uh, proofreading, at that point we could put it up on the website mm -hmm. and just say forgive formatting errors. This is because it could be subject to change during the public hearing. Totally. And leave it out at that. Do we have a good picture of our town common anywhere? There, you took one. I took one. Um, that took that one. is the highlight yeah. of this town, as far as I'm it. concerned. That's I have a I have a picture of the nice. gazebo, um, dressed in winter finery, and I added it to the Google folder, so we have it. Okay. We don't have a, we didn't have a summer one that I saw. No. Yeah, summer or fall, or I think for the you know to see the whole thing. I you know I just didn't know if there was one. All the, I don't it's have. It's kind one. of hard to capture. Probably the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Summer concert or something yeah. would be nice. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What that? Oh no, it's already passed. Was, what if anybody had a, uh, pictures of that community day where they were grilling on the green and they had one of the concerts and? Right, something like that would be nice. Somebody's got to have yeah. a picture. Of that. Yeah, yeah right but but I'm, I don't. I wonder if Park and Rec does. Yeah. Right. It, would, it would just be nice to have Park that in Park here. Donna Roads. I'll track. I'll try to track them down. I'll contact those folks, and I'll put it on the Google folder drive if well, I can find it. You sent me something, Bridget, of uh, that professional photographer who took a bunch of pictures for the town. Wasn't yes, Kim Davis. I saw on her website a picture that caught my eye, which I cannot remember the detail of. But she had a bunch of them, right? But she had a bunch of them of, of the town. So yeah. I'll, I'll see. I I'll see if I can still. I'll be able to find that because. Um, be careful, of coffee, right? Well, well, I, I would talk to Kim. Who, yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you could talk to her, we could add her to the acknowledgments. Right. Yeah. So. If she's okay with it. And she, she may might not appreciate that. Right. Yeah. I'll look at the photographs first to see it. Because she, the yeah. problem is we, you, you know, me? right now we can't go out and take photographs. So if we want summer right. pictures of like the common, right. but she had a, b a bunch of pictures around town, and she's a good photographer. Yeah, so. that would be perfect. Yeah. I'm just making some notes on. There's a couple other things that are. I don't think they necessarily need to go. You know, I need to talk about like little typos that. Um, I'm going to just give you Bill's email, mm -hmm. and I'm just crossing off the stuff that. Um... So there was a Word document sent to me that was the vision chapter. So that's what I've been working out yeah. of. I haven't been really editing much of the text. I've been copying and pasting what I was, you know. Yeah, no, they're, um, it's like a. <laughs> okay, I'm sure. I'm just trying to get through all the font. <laughs> <laughs> Does not like the font. Um, or he's just, yeah, totally pulling my leg here. Um. <laughs> Um, yeah, so back to page five. Sorry, I don't mean to get nitpicky about this, but um, I can't even figure which is page five. Helpful if I kept the pages in order. Hey, uh, can I interject an mm -hmm. idea here? So that, that these things and some of the other plans to break this up a little bit could be, you know, these building blocks or one of these things with these headings that are already in it. So to represent those at those topic lists in a visual format 
instead of the bulleted list, mm -hmm. just to break it up, just an idea. Well, I'd, I would definitely like to play around with that a little bit and see what I could, you know, what I can come up with. That's you probably have access to the um, example plans too, the Dropbox I didn't file. I, yeah. I would yeah. simplify his life. Yeah. Well, I looked at, uh, I, I, got a, I got a feedback sheet that had mentioned you guys were talking about the, um, the Dover plan, and I did look at the Dover yeah. plan and just, you know, got some ideas from it. But um, good yeah. work. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I did look at the Dover plan. I was trying not to take too much advantage of your <laughs> your right. time. Yeah. But if you need a copy, if you need reason. examples, I can point you to a couple of the ones that Bridget likes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'm just going to give you this list. I think that they're just weird th how things have lined out. And then there's one edit on Thank you. this page. I'm just going to give that to you. Yeah, the the, there. I'm much more visual than I am just reading. Yeah. Know, so it's nice that I get all this. Okay. All right. So we're good. We will have a draft for you from you on the 16th, which I will promptly email out to everybody and not let it fester in my drafts. Um, and Jack is going to send the Reset. chapter two, two to me and to Chris, Chris mm -hmm. um, and we'll coordinate editing that. Um, and I can get, I don't mean to wave a pen at you. Um, <laughs> I, I should have those chapters in hard copy. I, I think I have okay. them, the ones where. Okay. Yeah. Let's just make sure that what Jack sends, let's just yeah, coordinate. Yep. Yeah. And then I think I think we haven't done a thing to chapter three, the you know 30 pages of tables um, in a while. So I think that you probably have the most recent version of that. Yep. Um, okay. If you want me to email you the most recent version just so you can compare, I can do that. Sure. Okay. Okay. Did I miss anything? Not yet. All right. Okay. So you can go on vacation and enjoy yourself because we have some work to do for right. before we. <laughs> okay. Thank Paul, you. Thanks for coming yeah, from thanks class. Paul. Thanks, Paul. You thanks, know, Paul. the easiest thing might be if I have your email yeah, and then once I'm ready. Um, it, and the reason I it would be easier to meet with you is because uh, then I'm trying to describe what photograph goes with a caption. It'd be so much. I don't, easier. I don't mind at all. So all right. B A P. Two thousand eight. At Plymouth. Edu. Okay. Thank you. And for coming down tonight, you can have this old copy that was going to get recycled. So you have a copy of the like, gas station plan mm. if you want it. Okay. <laughs> you can take it to Texas. Do you want yeah. two? And a special yeah. offer, you can have a full-size plan. <laughs> <laughs> perfect for airplane reading. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll see you in a week or so. Thanks, Paulie. Good I'm work. From yeah. Texas. Thanks for all your work. Yeah, no take care. Mean it. Really appreciate it. Have a nice vacation. <laughs> okay. So one more thing, um, since um, town meeting was yesterday and we need to vote for our um, officer slate, um, the meeting we have after town meeting, which is tonight, um, we need to do that. So currently I am chair, Chris is vice chair, and Bridget is the non-recording secretary. I love my job. <laughs> <laughs> you do it so well. Thank you. <laughs> um, I will say I'm happy to continue as chair. Um, however, I am kind of maxed out. As I'm probably taking on too much as it is. So um, if, um, if you're happy with the amount of stuff I let slide, then that I'll try not to let that continue. But yeah, I'm, I'm feeling maxed out. So I'm happy to continue, but I can't, I can't really give it any more than I am now. So. And I'm happy to continue as vice chair and just throw more stuff my way. I mean, maybe we should work together to okay. take some of the stuff off your plate. Right. I, if, I mean. I think kind of presumptuous, got, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you continue as, uh, as chair, whoever is vice chair, you should <laughs> pass some. Here are our options. So our full members are Jack, Bonnie, Bridget, me, and Chris. So, and we do have to have a vote on this so yeah and I'm not I'm happy not being vice chair too so if anyone else is interested you're stuck yeah. <laughs> you got it <laughs> can I make a nomination yeah please of that slate <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Because <laughs> I, I would like to stay an alternate. <laughs> Um, so I would make a nomination um, that Rebecca continue as the chair of the planning board, that Chris Buckley continue as the vice chair, and that Bridget Powers continue as non-recording secretary. Do we have a second, second. for that? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, and thank you. Is the you. question of term limitation or your... <laughs> Eager to get us out already. How about, how about <laughs> campaign finance reform? Um, I was just about to say that that we have some people coming up to with their. Um, oh my gosh. This year. Like <laughs> you. We're not even. <laughs> yeah, we're done. At, yeah, you guys. Good luck after April. <laughs> yeah. So Chris, you and I are up. Um, and and Bridget. <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> yeah, because you filled out a. a Yep. Right. Yeah. Fortunately, so we, there's a board right, of selectmen meeting on this. Monday. Okay. I will make sure. Do you need letters from us by then? Um, I think that this is something. That, do we need letters or just the? I believe note it's, in the minutes because it's not. It's you know a continuing appointment. It's not like an appointment do. appointment. I, I feel like I've done letters. Need, okay. letters. need letters. And we have to get sworn in again probably. Yes. Too. Would you all please send an email letter of intent to Don Roach, D Roach at Plymouth. I don't believe you have to be um, sworn in again, but just a right because there's no break in continuity. Yes. Yeah. Um, that might have just been when I was and, conservation and commissioner. Use a heading like you know, because um, I won't speak to her before tomorrow, and she'll need to have it in her in her hands. But just say okay, uh, you know, to, to continue um, that we voted for officers. We also realized that the officers that were nominated are out of term. So I assume by the end up. of April, so, you know. Okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Yeah. But we can, we can get it all at once if you can yeah. get that information to them tomorrow. Okay. There's one other master plan related thing that we haven't talked about. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. We have homework. Um, and I don't know, I'm guessing we're not going to spend more time talking about tonight, but okay. um, volume two, the data book, the data book, the first section of the data book that the students presented to us a couple weeks ago, we said we'd get feedback to them. Um, they're working on the rest of the data book right now. Okay. Uh, we had a funny uh, realization that the, I think it was arts and recreation section of the data book was never written. <laughs> it was in the table of contents. There was a header. There was no content. So two of the women, three, uh, two of the women and one of the guys actually took it on and just researched like silver and the flying monkey and like the things that they thought park and rec, yeah. and they put together some short descriptions. Mm -hmm. um, and I asked them to add like Nimba because that was talked about in our planning process. I tried to think of a few things. That will be coming to you early in April, okay. and then we'll have the whole data book, and if we wanna wait and look at it all together, mm -hmm. it can all stay a Word document, but they're gonna be gone, and we're gonna lose the ability to make changes. I just know that the rest of the spring is gonna go by fast. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we should, uh, all right. So we should have the next one coming, the next draft comes up. On, or they'll be turning it in April 1st, right? First week of April, yeah, okay. for our meeting. Okay. So we're supposed to look at that. More or less, it's just if you could take a look, if you have any objections to anything. Okay. Mostly it's data that's been updated. It's yep. okay. pretty cut and dry. Okay. Um, Which I think I did send around, and then I think I did send the... Yeah. We don't have a hard copy of that, right? That's yeah. We have an electronic copy, okay. right? And if anyone needs it again... Do you mind just sending it? Sure, I'm happy again, to. Again, just to. You want me to send it to everybody, or send it to Brian, or mm -hmm. just send it to everybody? Just don't reply to me. Right. Okay. So, data book, section one. I think we do best with our feedback in person. It seems like trying to manage it on the email scale is yeah. either we're doing it in a group, which we shouldn't be doing, or individually, and I just can't. I can't keep track of it. So. I don't think there'll be a ton of feedback, but I mostly I want to know that you guys saw it. Yep. It's basically the appendix, yep. right. but I want to know that you saw it and you're okay with it. And mm -hmm. if you want something different reflected, but they're on the hook to help. This is their project, right. so. But um, you're you thinking that there may be some possible additions to the arts and recreation section that they, that will be that coming they in they April. Uncover. Yeah, I mean, you might think of stuff that they didn't. Right. Um, and there are the planning considerations, which they didn't edit at all from the last time. Um, because they don't have the benefit of all the conversations that you've been monitoring for volume one. Um, so we could pull that out or we can update it. 
I mean, that's really up to this planning board to decide. I just didn't want them deciding what planning considerations were. I wanted them only collecting updated data from the census and stuff like that, which was good experience for them. Sorry, good backtrack to master one. No, that's fine. I forgot about that. Alrighty. Um, any other new business? Any public comments? I'd <laughs> like to thank the board. Um, the citizens of Plymouth are well served by your dedication of stuff that is going on behind the scenes in our behalf. And uh, your process of the working through a site plan, any elements of doubts, uh, and being able to uh, articulate what causes you to ask that question because that's what the citizens and the people are, are uh, looking for and feedback to help them connect to the rationale as to why we have a master plan, why we have zoning, and understanding the mechanics of the process and just what was done tonight was a good uh, display of um, addressing issues in an orderly fashion and any uh, elements of doubt, uh, having a methodology of proceeding in an appropriate fashion to meet the specifications of our zoning ordinance and our desires for a well-organized and designed town, uh, it really, it helps a lot. So uh, I want to thank you as a citizen. Thank you. That's Frank. Thank you, Frank. All right, anything else? Just a reminder to the three officers to get that email to Don tomorrow. Yep. Okay. We would like to do the honor this evening. So moved. <laughs> <laughs> so fast. <laughs> Second. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone.